an LED lamp, a dead LED lamp, which is the best type of LED lamp in this channel, and it's actually not completely dead. If I turn this on, you'll see that half the LEDs light, and very occasionally the other half flick briefly, because uh, I'm guessing from that that they've got them as two series circuits, long series circuits, and that section is just in parallel with the other one. And that would suggest to me that it's a capacitive dropper that's in this. It's a very common style of driver for this type of circuit because the capacitive droppers are ideal for high voltage arrays of LEDs running at low current. They're, they're best for high voltage at low current. So let's open it up. So the story is that I bought this because I thought it would make an interesting video. It's going to be more interesting now. And I decided just to leave it in on in one of the rooms, just pointing up at the ceiling as a splash of light. And then I noticed that it, it seemed a bit lopsided, the light from it. So I took it down and took a look, and that's when I noticed that uh, half of it was out. So this is probably just jammed in the circuit board here. It is just jammed in. There is the capacitive dropper. It is the absolutely stereotypical loose little thing lying down here with a big drop of capacitor and then a smoothing capacitor. Looking at these, I thought initially it might be a dead LED, but I'm not so convinced about that because I'm looking at the soldering in this and it's not that great. Um, right, I'm just going to power this up again. I don't see anything, I don't see any like m completely missed solder joint. I'm wondering if it is a fault LED or the solder joints. Uh, I shall power it up while out, keep in mind that it is live when I do this. Sometimes you power it up, well that's not going to help because uh, it's not lit at the moment, but you can sometimes see the light shining through the holes if the, there's a bad solder joint. I'm not seeing that. I'm going to start by reflowing these. That's the best bet. So I'll pause momentarily while I do that because it will take a, a fair length of time to go around and reflow all these solder joints because some of them are looking a bit dry as lead-free soda does. But some of them are looking, well, that particular one there looks very sparse. Right, I shall reflow the solder and be back in a jiffy. Almost there, just down to the last inner LEDs. I've got the Trumple Vision brick in, so you can all get a close up of what's happened here. All I'm doing is I'm going round reflowing the solder joints with a bit of fresh solder, lead based solder, so it looks all shiny and fresh. I have to say, I'm noticing a strong rubbery smell from the flux. It's pretty horrible. The factory must stink. One of the reasons I like these particular style of LED lamps is they're very serviceable. Although it might sound horrific, uh, taking every single LED out of this, it is viable if you want a custom lamp. I'm just going to start working the opposite direction now. I'm soldering one lead at a time because I don't want to desolder the whole LED completely accidentally. I've only bridged one out with a solder bridge so far, but I fixed that. To remove the LEDs from a panel like this, you can just get a little bit of rubber sleeving that fits around them, like the silicon rubber hose. Push it on over the front and then just heat both solder joints up simultaneously and pull the LEDs out. It's very easy to change them. Which makes these LED these lamps relatively serviceable. Uh, that's me um, finished. I think I've got just about every solder joint there. Let's solder this back together and see what happens. So I'll bring in the very short leaded case. This is just so short it's annoying. They could have done with uh, longer wires in here, but then again, wires are money, I suppose. Let's tin these leads first with some fresh solda. So I'm just going to put a little touch of solda onto here. It's not great lighting while I'm doing it because uh, I'm up quite close to the camera at the moment. It's all zoomed in. Is this light going to work? That's the question. Is it going to have fixed the problem, or is it just going to be nicely, freshly soldered fault LEDs? Let's see if I can get this lead in here. Really is not a lot of uh, length in these. That makes it just that little bit harder to get this connected back in. Oh, that is terrible. 
I shall uh, chuck that out the way at the moment. I shall try and aim this wire where I want it. And then touch it with solder to flow onto that pad. I think I've got it. Okay, it's time to see if reflowing the solder joints has fixed the problem. Let's screw it back into the holder. If I've shorted any LEDs out, uh, you'll see just, well, missing LEDs. So I'll zoom back out here. Uh, we'll focus down onto that. If I focus down onto anything at all. And the whole lamp is working now. Bit of shimmer. Right, now it's working. Let's do some electrical tests on it. Let's bring the hop in. So this is supposed to be a 3.5 watt lamp. Flickery hoppy time. The lamp is drawing 4 watts. The current is about 37 milliamps. Oh, you know I should test that current directly at the LEDs. Keep in mind there's two circuits of LEDs. I wonder what the voltage is across them as well. There's 100 LEDs. I would guess there's going to be about 50 volts. Oh, power factor was, because of the nature of the fact it's got a lot of LEDs in series, the power factor is typically a typical capacitive dropper. It's roughly 0 0.5, it's 0 0.47. That means that uh, the current, it's not drawing the current over the full sine wave, it's only drawing it in the sort of upper part and bottom part of that sine wave, which is really common. Let's bring in the meter. Let's bring in the dinky little... Unity 210, UT210E. Alright, I'm going to try. There's not a lot of room here. Let's uh, set this to the 2 amp setting. Let's set it to DC. Let's null that out. Power it up. It says 23 milliamps. I'm, I'm a bit sceptical about that, to be honest. It would be nice if it was, because that would be great in LEDs. I'm wondering if the alignment of this is such that... Uh, I'm kind of wanting to get another meter in here with uh, test clips, actually. You have to be careful when you're using the uh, DC clamp meter not to have it near too much other circuitry, because it'll all have an influence on it. And unfortunately, because of the very nature of this, going to zero that out. It's going to be a bit of an angle. Is that going to show any differently or is it going to show? And the LEDs have fallen down over it again. Okay, null out. No, it's still showing 25 milliamps. That is intriguing. I want more information. One moment, please. Um, no, it turns out it was absolutely fine. It's round about 25 milliamps indeed. And that's 25 milliamps split between two circuits. So each is just 12 milliamps through those LEDs, which is brilliant. That's uh, That means that lamp's going to last for ages. Let's see what the voltage is. Let's uh, change the settings. And uh, let's see. I'll have to... I'll, I'll solder this wire back on there, so I'll just pause momentarily while I do that because it's going to involve a bit of faffing about. That's better. It's back on. I've pulled the insulation up a little bit, stuck some leads on, hopefully not shorting LEDs out. There are 100 LEDs divided as 250 in series, both connected in parallel. 50 LEDs, 3 volts each, 150 volts. About 136 volts. Oh no, I've shortened some out. It is 150 volts. You could see when I bridged that there, uh, the change, the intensity change because I was bridging over onto another circuit. So that's exactly 3 volts per LED. So it is just pretty much textbook. So that's that fixed. That's good. And I do think it was just down to cruddy solder joints. Thanks, uh, European Union, with your... Uh, lead free solder. It's fantastic. I love it so much, said Clive, slightly sarcastically. This circuit board is one of these ones that's just not going to go in easily, is it? It always gives me the creeps trying to get that in because you don't want to press down the LEDs too much. Uh, let's get a circuit board or, or something. I'll just turn this solder iron off. I'll get the fluke out of the way at the moment. I might actually need the 
crocodile clips on the fluke because it's quite handy. Let's use this screwdriver to gently press this in. Oh. Ugh. Yeah. I wonder how many of these they damage in the factory trying to get these back in. Do they have a wee press for it? Okay. Let's see if it still works and all the LEDs lit. All the LEDs are lit. It's back to normal. It is back working once again. So that's good. That's a good result. Right, I'm going to go and put this back in that lamp holder and get an extra splash of light on the ceiling again.